Yo, what's up, what's up, good people? Thanks for clicking and much, much love from this side. Straight out of Africa with positive vibes, good energy, yeah, and some creepy, crazy videos you don't want to miss out. Watch to the end and leave your comments, yeah. Let's dive in. Lots of love. This shit is weird. There's a footprint there. Footprint there. A hoof print. Splat. Another hoof print. And it stops right there. And nothing is wet. Like the grass isn't wet. There's nothing wet. And I've walked this trail. Twice and have not seen anybody and no one comes out this late slash early like what the fuck like what is that <laughs> It's not. Fucking UFO or something, Robert. You should tell Debbie to come over here. Yo, what is that? Oh my god. That's got to be. Hey, Debbie. A fucking UFO, for sure. Yo. Yeah. Oh my god. Huh? Yo. Yeah. What is that? It's like right in the sky right there. Can you get full? Yeah, get up closer. There you go. Holy fuck. That's a fucking UFO. Oh my god. Yeah. Holy shit. Huh? Now it's dis dissipating. Yo, what's that, man? An alien train or what? No. In 2023, Ancestor Fortnite, Pitrupaksha, will happen between September 29 and October 14. During this period, if possible, go to a body of water, a river, or lake, the sea, the ocean. If not, just sit in your house. If possible, offer water, milk, and black sesame seeds. If not, offer something that you know your recently deceased ancestors really preferred and enjoyed. But invite your ancestors, offer something to them, appreciate them, and pray that they will be satisfied wherever they are now. This is the time to do that. May all the Pitrus and Matrus be satisfied and pleased. Yo, what is that guy even saying? Yo, man, Alex United with his vocal coach. Oh, one X is the bear. This is so great. You remember that video that that guy was being chased by a bear and he thought it wanted to bond with him? But that guy is this guy and he stopped fearing and now they bonded with this bear very well. You see, the bear just needed a friend. There was no need to be scared. Sometimes you see dog coming towards you running, you will get scared, you run. But the dog just wants to play, you see? Oh, this bear here is so interesting. Very happy. That's why it was going so fast behind that guy. So, and if you're wondering which video that is, you can check our previous episodes. There is a video that guy was running. Now that is Shaga. Why would I come and pick this black sucker? Well, because second highest level of magnesium of any food on the planet. Second highest level of antioxidants of any food on the planet. Is this actually true? Well, yes, chaga mushrooms actually have more antioxidants than any other superfood like blueberries or acai berries. They're rich in vitamins that help with metabolism, nerve function, and overall cellular health. So they're definitely worth the hype. If this man was alive, he would absolutely crush TikTok. He'd be way more popular than the Kardashians. I'm going to show you part of the talk that this man, Earl Nightingale, gave that so many people have said it has changed their lives forever and they listen to it every day. So you're definitely going to want to save this. Let me tell you something, which if you really 
understand it will alter your life immediately. If you understand completely what I'm going to tell you from this moment on, your life will never be the same again. You will suddenly find that good luck just seems to be attracted to you. The things you want just seem to fall in line, and from now on you won't have the problems, the worries, the gnawing lump of anxiety that perhaps you've experienced before. Doubt, fear, well, there'll be things of the past. Here's the key to success, and the key to failure. We become what we think about. Now let me say that again. We become what we think about. Throughout all history, the great wise men and teachers, philosophers and prophets have disagreed with one another on many different things. It's only on this one point that they are in complete and unanimous agreement. Now how does it work? Why do we become what we think about? Well, I'll tell you how it works as far as we know. Now to do this, I want to tell you about a situation that parallels the human mind. Suppose a farmer has some land, and it's good for the land. Now the land gives the farmer a choice. He may plant in that land whatever he chooses. The land doesn't care. It's up to the farmer to make the decision. Now remember, we're comparing the human mind with the land because the mind, like the land, doesn't care what you plant in it. It will return what you plant, but it doesn't care what you plant. Now let's say that the farmer has two seeds in his hand. One is a seed of corn. The other is nightshade, a deadly poison. He digs two little holes in the earth, and he plants both seeds, one corn, the other nightshade. He covers up the holes, waters, and takes care of the land, and what will happen? Invariably, the land will return what's planted, as it's written in the Bible, as ye sow, so shall ye reap. Now remember, the land doesn't care. It'll return poison in just as wonderful abundance as it will corn. So up come the two plants, one corn, one poison. Now, the human mind is far more fertile, far more incredible and mysterious than the land, but it works the same way. It doesn't care what we plant. Success? Failure. A concrete, worthwhile goal? Or confusion? Misunderstanding? Fear? Anxiety? And so on. But what we plant, it must return to us. You see, the human mind is the last great unexplored continent on Earth. It contains riches beyond our wildest dreams. It will return anything. We want to plant. Oh, that's so interesting. Plant love, mercy. What <laughs> 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 Gagena kula ba muka muka muka. Gagena kui tamu. Gagena kui tamu kamu. Atu wakana. Atu wakana enjoy kaga. Atu wakana enjoy kaga. Atu wakana enjoy kaga. Atu wakana enjoy kaga. Atu wakana enjoy An electric fish. Now this is shocking. Imagine synthetic humans being made that can walk and talk. Disney World, for instance, down there in the Haunted Mansion, you see the hologram, right? Oh, you know how to make a hologram. Well, our scientists have learned how to make people. They call them synthetics. Are you familiar with those? Um, well, actually, we just interviewed John Lear, and he was talking about being in an audience, 
in which they were given a lecture by a guy that they thought was real and found out later was he was a hologram. Well, it's a synthetic. A synthetic's when you touch their skin, it feels like uh, plastic almost. That's the latest technique. The old, the old techniques, uh, if you guys can rent a video, uh, the boys from Brazil, rent it because in it, it gives you the exact way it, how our government's been making people. Really? Yeah, well, come and the on. Soviets have a different method called... I mean, making people, meaning temporary people? No, walking, talking ones. Meaning through genetics? You're not talking about that? Well, let me tell you. Let me. Uh, the movie shows it, but I'll share it with you right now. All right. All I need to do is take two cells off of your body, yours. Uh-huh. We give them a small electrical charge. I'm just going to act like a fertilized egg. If I got a fertilized egg, all I need is a receiver in order to make it. So they were hypnotizing women you know, said they were being invaded by aliens. And the fetus starts growing, right? Needs food. Well, they can use cows and sheep, too. It's again, a food source. That's all we need. After about 14 weeks, all of a sudden, that fetus is gone. Because they've learned to take, that's when the fetus starts developing its own blood supply. Then they've used the pituitary hormone extract that they have, which accelerates the being that grows. And the original technology was given to our government by the grace. Now, the reason was that our scientists were all excited because we could have spare parts. If you need a heart or a liver or anything, you won't have any rejection. It's your own DNA, right? Okay, because theoretically, if we have overpopulation, we don't need more people, right? That's, but the so-called elite are selecting on who they want to have around anyway, so if we want to keep people going as long as we can. I, I talked to the doctor that was working on uh, regeneration of Castro, uh, for instance. Right. On the DNA sequencing. And, that, and they're just learning about this. Well, I, my understanding is that a lot of presidents have already been replaced. That's right. Yeah, I, like, I don't think... They're I walking think, around, they're, they look old, but they basically... Uh, some well, of the people are just I'll, I'll, I'll second, just give you something to ponder. I'll give you something to ponder. Get some old videos of George Bush. His, when he first came into office. Look at the person and listen to him speak. Look at his actions and listen to his everything that's there. Now, it's a lot easier to put somebody out in front to act as a, you know, even Bush did. He had somebody else that was up there acting like he is and look like it. Even Hitler had a, you know, he had his stand. In fact, his stand-in was the one that they found in the, in the ground over in Germany. I mean, Hitler and Eva and the dog and 14 other people got aboard a plane and flew down to Barcelona, Spain. You were aware of that and then ended up in Antarctica or in Swabenland and then died a few years ago in Brazil. That's what we heard. That's oh, I got. What we a, heard. I have all the documents from our own government. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we have a contact, one and of our Stalin contacts. even, uh, Stalin asked for the, you know, they tried to burn the body and he got the body back and he said, wait a minute, different ears and, and the um, testicles were different and everything else. So they knew it wasn't Hitler. But is it a clone <laughs> or not? Oh, now you know going about cloning. Cloning techniques, uh, since 38 we've been 1938, they've been making clone people. There's eight countries making clones. I have a doctor okay, friend that all it does is treat you, the clones. Where do you get your information? I get it from some of the people that are willing to come forth, and they talk to me because they hope I'll put the information out because they, they always got two people following them and maybe be killed. If I start talking about cloning too much, the people that get involved into that uh, you disappear on it, so I don't go into too many more details. But there are inform there is information that's available, and it more and more of that's coming on the line. I just told you go rent the uh, the movie. Okay, voice from Brazil. Yeah, and you'll see the whole technique on what they they show it to you in different places, so you you can imagine what it's going on. Okay, so now, now let's go to the next step because this is the most important part. All right. If your physical reality that you have based on this physical life that you have this dream is made up of the experiences that is impregnated on your body and in your mind consciously right mm -hmm. your soul memory is another thing mm -hmm. it goes back whatever time that you elected to be in this incarnation for whatever reason now let's show you the division on these things since the body is very physical and we had we just got you making a physical being in a few months for spare parts they said, now we've got the perfect deal. How can we have that work better? Well, if you go to the hospital today and get an encephalogram, what's that? That's the memory of your conscious mind. It's on the CD. Let's download it on this being 
now we got a walking, talking duplicate that has the total memory that you have because we just took it off of your own mind. Okay, it's like Blade Runner, the Android. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The only thing is that it's like this uh, DVD, re re you know, recorder. Sometimes you have glitches in it, so you have to have them tuned up occasionally or redone them. And so we take them to Camp David or there's a wing at Bethesda Hospital to just tell you. There's, if you go down there and check, you'll find the, the nurses, if they're willing to come forth, they'll tell you they work on those people and they call them the others. I thought it was uh, interesting. <laughs> they're people. Remember, these people can think and act, but they don't sure. have soul. That's also prophesized. Right, Soulless that's beings. true. That's true. Now, we have another agenda that's going on, so you have to be careful of all this. There are many extraterrestrials that would like to be in on the game right now. So they can sometimes will come into these physical beings that we've made to manipulate them. I see. So okay. now you have a combination effort that you have to look at and discernment. Mm -hmm. You have to discern what the game is. Well, this figure that most of the leaders we have in the world have been bought and paid for or created to think a certain way in the world. Yo, man, now that is scary. Yo, imagine people out here or others that you don't know putting on synthetic masks or synthetic people that can walk and talk. Oh my God. Ooh, ooh. Watch till the end for crazy stuff coming your way, man. And share love. Oh, oh. This is scary. Yo, I even had to believe. No, what's happening here? Oh, oh. why are they ejecting a balloon? It's, a, it's like one of those hacks we are seeing that they are trying. How is it possible? Oh, I think only a true doctor can do this. These other ones, you try this, imagine it is someone and it is very scary. You know, this guy, I think, is a true doctor. Oh! Oh, this is so interesting. Did you know doctors can do that? All right, well, some disturbing reports have emerged from Ukraine over the past few weeks of women being kept in underground bunkers by companies that are making billions of dollars off of the baby farming industry. Yes, baby farming in Ukraine uh, is a booming industry, uh, rakes in billions of dollars, actually. Uh, here is the Swiss-based baby surrogacy company called Biotexcom with a promo video explaining how desperate Ukrainian women can come to their bunkers and have their uteruses turned into a baby-making machine. Watch. Now I will show you our bomb shelter where we will transfer our clients and their newborns in case of the outbreak of hostilities in Kiev. Let's go. Here is a toilet. <laughs> Here is a toilet. Here we have a first aid kit. There are all the medications needed to administer first aid. Here you can see gas masks. There are instructions on how to use a gas mask all over the shelter. This bomb shelter can hold up to 200 people who will feel comfortable here. Here is our sitting and bedding zone. There are sleeping bags and beds. It's possible to sit or lie here. We have enough sleeping bags and gas masks for everyone who will stay here. There are shelvings with food, as well as tableware, napkins, diapers, and all the stuff needed for babies. Newborns will feel comfortable here. Everything needed can be done here. Here is our children's area. Here we can place newborn babies. There are special cots prepared for them. There are also cribs for a bit older babies. You can see that babies feel absolutely comfortable here. We have everything needed. Diapers, cribs, blankets, clothes, food, everything needed. But if she's talking in a hypothetical about a bomb shelter, why are there babies there now? Well, it's not a hypothetical. This is where they are going to have a baby making factory. This is where you go to be a surrogate. This is, you need a womb? We've got you covered. Go ahead, David. I was going to say, maybe those are just extras. 
you know, they have these, they make these videos, they bring in people and mm -hmm. to set up these shots. So maybe they're just all actors. Tester babies. They're, yeah, they're actors. Yeah, tester babies. <laughs> right. The rent, a womb, the rent a womb business. You can call it whatever you want. People in the chat are saying this is absolutely sick. This is what's happening. The rent a womb business is actually booming and is expected to double next year. The amount of money that's brought in on this rent a womb business is expected to double this next next year. And the best place to do this right now uh, is in Ukraine, where desperate women are being exploited. Uh, the Gray Zone, according to Jeremy Lafredo, reporting for the Gray Zone today. Quote, surrogates have to be from poorer places than their clients, explained the medical director of Kiev's largest baby factory. Of course, that makes sense. Here's a direct quote from the Gray Zones reporting on this. Uh, Penchota of the Swiss-based Biotexcom says the business model that enabled him to build one of the most profitable surrogacy companies in the world is simple exploitation. Quote, we are looking for women in the former Soviet republics because logically the women have to be from poorer places than our clients. Yes, rich people can rent out the wombs. It's no surprise, then, that Biotexcom's quest for rentable wombs has led it to the seemingly endless pool of desperate young women in war-torn Ukraine. Eight years of conflict, combined with the subsequent proxy war between NATO and Russia, has plunged Ukraine into economic disaster. As Ukrainians sank into poverty, their country swiftly emerged as the international capital of the surrogacy industry. Today, Ukraine controls at least a quarter of the global market despite being home to fewer than 1% of the world's population. How did that happen? Those numbers. Alongside the industry's rise, a seedy medical underworld filled with patient abuse and corruption took hold of the country. But it is worth pointing out that even before the war, the United Nations and other human rights organizations were setting off alarm bells about Ukraine's child trafficking and organ harvesting. They had a big problem. Shortly after 2014, NATO launched its proxy war against the people of the Donbass. We called it, you know, we call it a genocide. And it provided the perfect opportunity to use those victims in all sorts of nefarious ways, from organ trafficking to child trafficking. And the world was aware of what was happening in Ukraine. For instance, on your screen right now is a Huffington Post report. 2015. This is a 2015 Huffington Post report that I hunted down today. Back when the media didn't feel motivated to tell uh, lies about Ukraine. No. Yeah, this... back when you could call Hydra Hydra. Back when you could actually use the term right. and not be uh, suspended for hate speech. <laughs> yeah, You're right. So this is 2015 from the Huffington Post. Not exactly a right-wing publication. Drop this bombshell report saying Ukraine's orphanage is feeder for child trafficking, reads the headline. Ukraine's orphanages are feeder for child trafficking. The report highlights the findings of a three-year-long investigation into Ukraine's orphanages and found that children are at risk of being trafficked for sex, labor, and the selling of their organs. Yes, organ harvesting. The report says, quote, some 82,000 children are said to have lived in these facilities. Although no one seems to know for sure, some Ukrainian activists put the number closer to 200,000 children, according to the report. Don't believe it? Well, you don't have to. It seems so unbelievable, right? It does. It seems so unbelievable. You don't have to believe it, though. You don't have to listen to their investigation. You can actually visit the U.S. State Department's website right now. Go to the State Department's website yourself, like I did. And you can read right from their own 2014 report. Here's the U.S. State Department report. This is the U.S. State Department's 2014 report on human trafficking. In 2014, the U.S. State Department's trafficking in persons report stated that children in orphanages and crisis centers continue to be particularly vulnerable in trafficking with, to trafficking within Ukraine. Here's a quote. Take a look at this. About the risks of being involved in criminal activities abroad, the government of Ukraine did not report any investigations or prosecutions of government employees for alleged complicity in trafficking-related offenses during the reporting period, despite reports of corruption in other sectors of the government. Oh, no? Now, you know, <laughs> add to that, like, right now, at this particular point in time, we are paying probably some of those people's pensions, salaries, 
the people that were involved oh, in yeah. that because the they're government probably still employees. There. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's true. And, and that's just the money that's on the books. Right. Right. All of the money that's funneled there that's off the books and they're receiving. The section on Ukraine in this report is particularly disturbing. It highlights how the government essentially ignores child trafficking and turns a blind eye to it. The U.S. State Department report even says that the Ukrainian government wouldn't even prosecute its own government officials who were involved in child trafficking. If you could imagine anything more troubling than having these children sold off for, for you know, tr sex trafficking, imagine their organs being sold off on the black market. Uh, you don't have to imagine it. It's actually happening at an increased clip, by the way. Now, you'll recall... Well, take a look at this on your screen. So this is inside. This is a report on the inside, the massive multi-billion dollar global organ trafficking industry. It's massive. And according to the World Health Organization, organ trade is the buying and selling of organs outside of national medical systems and for profit. Global Financial Integrity uh, nonprofit estimates that 10% of all organ transplants, including lungs, heart and liver, are done via trafficked organs. 10% of them. I think that number is low, according to other reports I've read. But just 10% is enough. Uh, if you want a kidney on the black market, by the way, the going rate today, according to the numbers that I research, you could pay $30,000 to get a black market kidney. $30,000. Hmm. One kidney is traded on the black market, according to the reports, every hour. Every hour. Last year, Russian authorities discovered that Red Cross, they found these Red Cross files in a hospital in Mariupol once they took over this hospital. They discovered that files that had children's organs listed on them. According to investigators, according to uh, the reports at the time from Sputnik News, hundreds of medical files found at the Red Cross base contain information on child, children's health, healthy organs with no indication of any illnesses. The files also have data on who the child's parents are. You want to make some money? Sell off one of your child's kidneys. $30,000 on the black market. It's a great and highly lucrative business. You know, we had Tim Ballard. Yo. You know, that, that video was very scary up to this far. It's hard. It is very hard for me to fathom that people can do crazy things like those. Selling other people's organs that they were given to them by God. By God! Free! And you are selling them. Oh, that is not good at all. Please, people should be merciful, you see? And sharing love out there and peace. That way there could be no all these such... It is shocking, shocking drama. You see, thanks for watching up to this part and much, much love. You see, keep it tuned for more fire episodes coming your way. And don't sell organs. It's bad business. Yes.